fourth grade carpenter students. This is my cat, Lancelot, and he's with me today to teach you um, our newest lesson. Now, he and I are not used to being in front of the camera, but whatever happens is sort of going to happen, so we're not going to stop. So thank you for helping me. Would you wave goodbye to everybody? Bye. And here we go. Boys and girls, folk songs in music were the newspapers of their day. They told stories about what people were doing, how people were feeling, what actions they were taking. And we're in some pretty interesting times right now, so what better way to sort of tell about what we're doing than to have you write an original song about you. Now we're going to use the melody of a very well-known folk song, Oh Susanna, which I will teach you in a few minutes. But let's first of all take a tour of the packet that your parents downloaded for you. Let's take a look, page one. We'll be filling this in together a little bit later, answering some questions and just some general information. In our next lesson, we'll be using page two because we'll be learning all about what makes something a folk song. And I need to tell you that it's interesting because if you study world cultures, every culture on this planet has its own folk songs. It's really interesting to discover them. Our next page, page three, is one we're going to be using in just a few minutes because that's the actual folk song. And we're going to use the melody of this and change the words to fit your story. Moving on from that to page four, we're going to learn about some California gold rush history. Because even though Old Susanna was written in 1841, by 1849, it had moved completely across the country to California to tell the story of the California Gold Rush. Page five will be what we'll be starting on in just a few minutes. It's a brainstorm outline all about you. You'll use this to be able to write the lyrics to your song. The next pages are the melody of the song, and we'll go over those as we need them. So right now, if you will please turn to page five, we're gonna get started. Now, in this middle circle right here on the line, please print your first name. If you have a nickname and you want to use that, that's fine. Print your first name in this big bubble using your pencil. Now, put your pencil down and just listen for a few moments. You're going to do this part over a period of a week or a week and a half. You don't have to do it all at once. So please just fill in one or two bubbles a day. That's all you have to do. But let me explain. In this first part, we're talking about school stuff. What's your favorite subject or your best subject? What are you really talented in? What enrichment classes do you like at school? Are you in any teams at school, like our school basketball team, our school soccer team, Girls on the Run? Do you participate in chorus or Vex Robotics? So add that information in here, because that's all about you. Over here, your family and pets. Describe your mom, your dad. Do you have pets? Tell me about them. Cat, dog, color, name, how long you've had them. Give me some interesting information about everybody in your household. 
After all, with all of us staying home, you've gotten to know them pretty well over the last couple of weeks. Down here, sports and hobbies. Are you on a sports team? Do you like to watch sports events? You can tell me about those. Do you have a favorite team from the Patriots to the Lakers to whoever? Do you like collecting things? Do you cook? Do you sew? What kinds of hobbies do you make art? What kind of hobbies? What are things that you like to do in your spare time? Even video games. And finally, over here, do you see the bubble that says age right here? With your pencil, please write in your age as of today. How old are you? And then in these bubbles, tell me some more things about yourself. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite ice cream flavor? What's your favorite food? Where's your favorite place to go for vacation? Or when this virus quarantine is over, where's the first place you want mom and dad to take you? Tell me that information down here. Now again, we're going to do this over a series of days over a week and a half. So don't think you have to do this all in one sitting, but please give me some specific details. The better job you do here, the more facts you'll have to put into your song and it will make it so much easier to write. Okay, we're going to shift now to page four. So take a moment, I beg your pardon, we're going to shift now to page three. So, this is what you're looking for. And let's just find out a little bit about the man who wrote this song. Now, I have to tell you, the history of the song started in 1841 in an ice cream parlor in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I don't know what flavor he was eating at the time, because boy, I wish I did. If it were me, it would be Rocky Road. What would it be for you? Anyway, our composer, Stephen Collins Foster, was eating that ice cream when he got the idea to write a silly folk song. Now, before we learn the song, let's learn a little bit about him. If you would read this together with me, Stephen Foster, was born in Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania on the 4th of July, 1828. Even as a little boy, he showed an interest in music. When Stephen was two years old, he could pick out melodies on his sister's guitar. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Most two-year-olds I know can't even pick up a guitar and hold it, let alone play it. By the time he was eight, he could play the flute, and one of his first compositions was a piece for four flutes. Foster is remembered by some people as America's favorite folk songwriter. During his lifetime, his melodies became popular with people all over the United States. Today, some of Foster's songs are known and loved in all parts of the world. Now, here is the music to O oh Susanna. And I'll bet you've noticed that there's a mistake on the page that we have to fix with our marker. Whoops. I dropped my marker. Okay. All song titles have to have what around them? Quotation marks. So, with your marker, let's add the quotation marks around the song title.
The next action we're going to take before we actually sing is to take your marker and out here in the margin, would you please number each staff from one to six? This is going to help us learn the song more quickly. So when you're finished, yours will look like mine. Okay, we're ready to sing. Well, almost. Let's make sure, as we do with all of our music, that we circle the treble clef at the beginning of the song. Remember that the purpose of the treble clef is to organize and name the middle to high notes. Next, we're going to draw a box around the meter signature. Right here. The top number of that meter signature is telling us that there are how many beats in each measure? If you said two, you're exactly right. Two beats in each measure. Now, you're used to seeing a number at the bottom, but some music books actually show you what kind of note gets one beat, so you don't have to memorize anything. So in our song, what kind of note is going to get one beat? Remember, that's a quarter note. So that will get one B. Now, let's learn how to sing the song. We're gonna do this the way we usually do it in class. I'll play and sing a phrase, and then you repeat it after me. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Your turn, ready? I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Try that one more time. Here we go, together with me. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Next, line two. Here we go, I'll go first. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Your turn. Here we go. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Let's try that one final time, and then we'll put it together from the beginning. Here we go, line two. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Let's go from the very beginning of the song together. Ready? Here we go. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Now, I'm wondering if you noticed anything while we were singing those two melodies. Because they are almost exactly alike, except for two notes. Hum along and take a look and touch each note with your pencil as we hum it. Starting with line one. Two. Ready? Touch each note. Did you figure out where the melodies are different? If you said the last two notes of the song, you are absolutely correct. So, with your marker, Let's circle the last two notes of each line like this. The fact that the 
those lines are so similar except for two notes makes it so much easier to learn to sing. So, here we go. Line three. Here we come into the nonsense part of the song. See if you can figure out the joke that Stephen Foster was making. Listen first. It rained all night, the day I left, the weather it was dry. Your turn to sing that, ready? It rained. It rained all night, the day I left, the weather it was dry. Let's try that one more time, okay? Here we go. It rained all night, the day I left, the weather it was dry. I hope you got the joke, because there's one more in line four. Listen, I'll sing it first, and then you sing it back. The sun's so hot, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Your turn to sing it. Ready? Line four. The sun's so hot, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Good job. All right, now, let's see. Let's see if you can accept a challenge. Take a look at line three again. It is actually the melody and an exact match to either line one or line two. Can you figure out which of those lines it matches? Take a look at the notes. And again, you're looking near the end. Which one? line one or two, does melody line number three match? Did you say number three matches exactly with number one? That is correct. So we're going to use a circle around line one and line three to show that they are exactly the same melody. Now, take a look at line four, because that has an exact match. Does line four match lines one and three? Or does line four match line two? I hope that you found out that lines two and four are an exact match. So we're going to draw a square around those numbers to show they're different from one and three, but they match each other. So yours should now look like this. One and three and two and four. And now let's go back to the beginning of the song and sing that much together before we finish it. Oh, and by the way, did you catch the silliness? It's in line three. It rained all night the day I left the weather it was dry. Definitely not really possible. And then the sun so hot I froze to death. Again, I think Stephen Collins Foster was sort of making a good joke there. All right, let's go from the beginning of the song and sing all the way up through line four. Together with me, ready? Here we go. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm going to the ways which is actually the refrain. And I just want to remind you that the refrain is the part of the song that repeats using the same lyrics and melody every time we see it. So here we go with the refrain of Oh Susanna. I'm going first. Oh 
matches one of our earlier lines. So be aware, maybe you can figure it out really quickly. My turn first. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Your turn, ready? I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Did you figure out the match? Take a look, especially at the last two notes. If you figured out that line six matches lines two and four, great job. So again, around the number six, we're drawing a box to show that they are alike. Six, four, two, are all the same melody. One and three match. But what about five? Does five match anything in the song? Listen to it. I don't think line five matches anything in the song. That's the one that's really different. So we're going to use a different shape to show that. Please draw a triangle around line five. Mrs. Talil, look at who also finds this so fascinating. <gasps> My musical cat, Lancelot. I wonder if he can write a song about him. Okay, everybody. Let's go through the entire song now from the beginning with me together. Here's your introduction. Here we go. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. In the spring of life, the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun so hot, I froze to death. on that brainstorm all about you. Don't try to do it all at once. You can use it as a break from when you're doing math or language arts or anything else your teacher's assigned. But make sure that you fill in every bubble because again, the more ideas you have, the easier it will be to write your song. I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to our song unit. And I look forward to seeing you next time in lesson two. Have a musical, magical day.